I'm Eloise. Sigra and Gerard are going to give us a hand today with some investigations. Hi guys. Hello. So far, we have looked at patterning in the world around us and we've worked with number patterns that involved time and measurements. We've used decimal numbers, fractions and exponents. Today, we will move on to patterns formed by geometric shapes. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify and describe different geometric patterns and predict how the pattern will continue. Right. Are you ready to investigate some patterns? Cool. Let's go for it. I've made a pattern here using matchsticks. I want you to make the same pattern from the matchsticks you have there. Why don't all of you watching get some matchsticks and make the same pattern? Then you can try to complete the patterns before comparing your answers to ours. Now I want you to have a look at your pattern. Can you see what the pattern is? If you can, use it to decide what the next diagram of matchsticks will look like. Then make it. I think we should look at the patterns and the matches we used. Then we can see what to do next. Yes. So I realized that the first triangle we used three matchsticks. And then in the second triangle, we just added two. In the last pattern, we just added another two to make the third triangle. So we're creating a chain of triangles by adding two more matchsticks. So to get the next diagram, we just add two matchsticks over here. That is very good. Now let's see if you can take this a little further. Can you work out how many matchsticks you will need to make the 10th diagram in this pattern? Um, I think I've got it. Okay, Gerard, let's hear it. We've just added a triangle, you know, to each one. So in the first diagram, we've got one triangle. And in the second, we've got two. The third, we've got three triangles. So if there was a fourth diagram, it would have four triangles. And in the tenth diagram, there'd be ten triangles. That looks good, but it doesn't tell us how many matchsticks we need to make the tenth diagram. Do you have any ideas, Sigra? Why don't you just build the ten triangles and count them? That would take forever. And I mean, there must be a more mathematical way of working it out. I mean, we just added two matches each time. That's got to count for something. Okay, how about this? We used two matchsticks for every triangle we added on, right? So it must be two matchsticks times 10. That's going to equal 20. You're almost there. Just remember though that the first triangle had three matches, not just two. Oh yeah. I think that there will be 21 matches. You could be right, but why don't you check that by building the 10th diagram? Okay. Mm. So we just add two matchsticks every time for each triangle. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. I knew I was right. There's twenty-one matches, not twenty. And that's because there were three matches the first time. And the rest we only added two. 
That's right, Gerard. Let's have another look at the diagrams. The first diagram uses three matches. Diagram two uses five matches. The third uses seven matches. And the diagram four uses nine matches. Do you think you could use these numbers to get the pattern or rule for the tenth diagram? Do you see that the number of matches needed to complete any of these diagrams is the number of triangles times two plus one more match? So, for the tenth diagram, it is ten triangles times two in brackets plus one, which equals 21 matches. To check that our rule works, let's try it out on diagram four. Four triangles times two plus one equals nine. Yes, that's the right answer. So the rule we found seems to work for any number of triangles in the pattern. Um, Eloise, um, I was wondering, is that the only way to complete the pattern? What do you mean, Gerard? What if I didn't add a triangle to the right of the chain and instead moved it to over here? I like that pattern a lot more. Slicer. Do you see that although Gerard has made a pattern that looks different, it also works? Why don't you show us where you would add the next two triangles to this pattern? Sure. Uh, two matches would go over here. And then one match to complete the pattern. But that's not the same pattern. Won't adding one match to the set of two change the whole rule of the pattern? You have a point about the rule, but the shape is still a pattern. See, I made a hexagon. It has six equal sides. That's an excellent observation, Gerard. And Sigra is also right in saying that the rule for the pattern has changed. The numbers that we used on the first pattern won't work for the new pattern. Both patterns are correct though. But is this the end of the pattern or is there a way to continue this pattern? Why don't you give it a try? I think we've got something here. Okay, let's hear it. You see, we took the end of my old pattern and used it as a beginning for my new pattern. We started with the hexagon I constructed and we decided to add two matchsticks at a time until we ended up with another hexagon. I reckon we can build another hexagon onto these ones. You're quite right. You could carry on adding hexagons. But before you do that, let's see if we can identify the maths in the pattern of matchsticks. If I call the first hexagon diagram one, How many triangles are in it and how many matches does it use? Um, let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 and 6 triangles. Okay, and the second diagram which has 2 hexagons in it? I get 12 plus 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 which gives me 23 and another two, four, six triangles which gives us 12 triangles altogether. It looks like the pattern is changing. Well, let's look at the third hexagon and see what we get from that. We have to decide where we're going to add the third hexagon. Let's do it over here.
Now, why don't you add up the matches and triangles? I get another 11. So it's 23 plus 11 to give me 34 as the total. I get 6, 6, and another 6. 18 triangles. Well done. All your observations are correct so far. But I think we should move away from counting the matches now. At some point, you are going to run out of matches. Do you think you could identify any patterns in what we have so far? If you can, use them to predict what we expect to find in the fourth diagram of the sequence. Here's something obvious you could use. If we number our diagrams, then the number of hexagons is the same number as the diagram. So the fourth diagram is going to have four hexagons. The triangles are easy to work out too. It's the number of hexagons times by six. So four hexagons times by six is 24. 24 triangles. Both correct. Now what about the number of matches used? I think we could say that the first hexagon uses 12 matches mm -hmm. and the ones thereafter only use 11. That's because the new hexagons are joined to the old hexagon by one match which is already counted. Right on track. Can you use what you have just described to write this down in numbers? I would say that the fourth diagram will have 12 plus 3 times 11, which will give us 45. Well done, you guys. For those of you watching, if you check this with your matches, you will see that Gerard and Sigra are correct. They have found a rule that works for any number of hexagons built in this way using matches. Their rule is the total number of matches equals 12 plus 11 times number of diagrams minus one. This isn't the only rule that works on the pattern. See if you can find another way to calculate the number of matches. Now it's time for a task. For this lesson's task, we leave you with a geometric sequence that has several patterns within it. First, write down at least two ways to describe a pattern in the sequence of diagrams. Then draw the next diagram in the sequence. Finally, use a rule to find the number of grey squares in the sixth diagram. I hope you've enjoyed exploring geometric sequences with us. Until next time, from me, Sigra and Gerard, goodbye. Cheers! Bye, see ya! Bye. <laughs>